and a convoy of ships. He went to Cairns one day and then pulled into Cairns and took on more army troops from Cairns and uh, then I crossed to Milne Bay. Now Milne Bay was, uh, we weren't stationed there, a, a, a very large harbour. If you look on a map, there's a great big thing like that. And there were at least a hundred ships in that area of Milne Bay and they, it was secure by then. The battle had moved right up to, towards uh, further north along and uh, it was a, a safe assembly point for well, shipping stuff into New Guinea, although there was no road connection with anywhere else. Uh, and uh, we stayed there for about three days for assembling convoys because we were going into dangerous waters to go up further and convoys and military ships and navy ships came on and, and uh, we landed there and spent some time there. So after about nine months there, and it was nine months of we thought the war had we really got into the war at that stage. There were all the Kitty Hawk squadrons were there, and Kitty Hawks could easily reach the uh, uh, Indonesian islands. And there were lots of Japanese uh, uh, settlements. You know, they weren't bases really, but lots of places the Japanese were. And the job of the Kitty Hawks was, apart from escorting bombers, was to harass them, to keep harassing them. And that was really. Uh, there came a time there when there wasn't any Japanese air opposition and they were ground attack aircraft. So the intense activity there, uh, there were several repair and servicing units there and uh, their sole job was maintaining all the squadron aircraft. The squadron aircraft did daily inspections but any larger inspections such as repairing damage or, or um, engine changes and all that was done at the RSUs. And uh, we, we, some, uh, well, intense activity. Forever, aeroplanes, forever, just, and there were, in these places, there were no buildings, there were no roads, there were no, nothing. They, the Americans put every roads in very quickly, but there were no buildings. We operated under uh, sheets of tarpaulin strung between pine uh, palm trees or stuck up on four poles and a tarpaulin and over it to park aircraft under for working and engine change, everything. No, no buildings or installations or equipment of that nature. And that's the way it operated and there were, you know, all the time there were supplies coming in by sea and air uh, of uh, aircraft parts you'd want, wings and engines and uh, undercarriages and tyres and wheels and all those sort of things were forever coming in. And the base for the repair and servicing units were using all them for restoring airworthiness. That's what it amounted to. We were there, as I say, nine or ten months, and we were then went up to Moratai. Now Moratai is up near um, on the Philippines. It's between New Ge uh, Indonesia and the Philippines. It's a northern island, and oh, I just can't think of the name of the group doesn't matter. Uh, we didn't know what we were doing there. The Americans had been there for a long time, oh, months, long time, <laughs> months, and they had gone on. And uh, there were three big uh, strips, or oh, mighty strips at uh, Moratai. Uh, the two main ones, one was a fighter strip and one was a bomber strip. And of course they, they were, the Americans used them mainly for going to the Philippines. And uh, Australian squadrons from there, um, we had Liberator squadrons there too, and uh, 23 and 24 I think. Uh, their job was back the other way, uh, Borneo. And you know, Borneo was important because there were oil wells at Borneo and it was very important to the Japanese, that's why they wanted it in the first place. And they had the oil, wells, oil refineries at Tarakan and uh, Balak Papan operating. So uh, the, the first, uh, the Australian army then came to, to Moratai uh, and they, then they, their purpose was to use Moratai as a base to launch attacks on Borneo. And uh, we were part of that. Uh, <laughs> an interesting thing 
we uh, our main one of the main activities we weren't didn't really get to servicing aircraft on those places very much but one of the main activities was uh, waterproofing motor vehicles because they, the, the landings uh, you couldn't get in close to the Borneo where we were going uh, and they had to go in by barge and they used when the ship I went on or our unit went on was a LST a landing ship troops uh, or, or tanks or trucks or anything and they went they roared up on the beach and dropped this huge big thing out the front and the, the vehicles moved out there and dropped into about a metre of water and drove ashore and so all the vehicles had to be waterproofed and that meant sealing the starter motors and the generators and put an, an, an extension on the, the um, exhaust and the air, air cleaner and the carburetor up high, as high as the roof of the truck. <laughs> it, um, it was sort of a big, you know, was, nothing was funny, it wasn't a joke, but we thought it was unrealistic, but it, it went without fault at the time. Started, they started engines up in the ship and drove them off and they didn't crash like that. They floated in the water and sank down and then kept going. Quite remarkable really, but that's how we landed. Oh, that's how the landings were done on uh, Noomphar Island, uh, not Noomphar Island, Labuan Island anyhow, I don't know. I wasn't a Tarakan or Balakpapan, but uh, it could well have been similar. Uh, the airstrip was a fine weather airstrip and, and on certain times it was totally out of action, shut down because of wet conditions. Uh, it was, you know, thousands of troops scattered in the vicinity and it was just, the ground was so wet it was mud everywhere. However, we, we were only there a few months and bang went the bomb. 10th of June to the 6th of August, or 15th of August, wasn't it, or something. So uh, overnight, like everything else, there was nothing to do the next morning other than what, thinking, what's going to happen to us now? We'll soon be out of a job. <laughs> However, that, uh, you know, we spent some time there and the, after a little while, uh, the aircraft uh, for the bombers and the bigger aircraft, there was immediate intense activity to strip them of everything to fly into Singapore, food in, people out.